Houses are refuge from the outside world. They hold so much life, sometimes seemingly alive themselves. But all life must come to an end. How do you hold a funeral for a home? This is the living room, and that's where they found him. And that's where he was essentially buried for, I mean, more than a year. For at least, at least a year, if yeah. not longer. Yeah, for 911, what's that? Just an emergency? It's been two years since this 911 call. Just want to make sure that guy is not dead inside his house. A call that proved to be so prophetic. You know, I'd hate for a year to go by and then someone discovers this guy's dead in his house. 383 days passed until Charles Frary, a man who suffered from mental illness, was finally found buried under all of that debris in his living room. A body was found he inside was found a hole in his own home. One of the worst cases of hoarding in Denver's history. Conditions in the hole were so unsanitary conditions. Our reporting showed how Chuck's case dragged on for more than a year. It took 173 days from that first 911 call for police to even try to contact environmental health by dialing 311. It took another 76 days for environmental health to finally get the message from police Chuck was likely dead in his house. And even then, the agencies couldn't agree on a plan to find Chuck. Do you know if police ever took cadaver dogs into the home? The cadaver dogs are not our decision. Uh, the environmental health, we had some discussion with them about that. Who handles the cadaver dogs? You know, I don't know. That would probably be a question for the police department, I think. The city didn't even order protective gear to enter the home until 377 days after that first call to 911. Was this paralysis by analysis? Um, I don't think so. We can't just barge into somebody's home. There's a limit to our authority. In emails we received when we first reported this story, the city admits it could have actually handled this case better. Now, a whole year later, we want to know if Chuck's story has prompted any change. Anytime anybody dies in, in, in our community, it's a tragedy. Back then, before his promotion, Chief of Police Paul Pazin was the commander of District 1 the district where Chuck lived and died. I was uh, aware that uh, a community resource officer was looking into the, the situation itself, and then I was aware uh, when we made the, the discovery and responded out to the scene. You can't uh, go barging into people's personal property. There's protocols that need to be followed, and, and oftentimes these things take uh, a lot of time. Seems like there was a clear communication breakdown between the police department and environmental health uh, during the handling of this case. I don't know the specific details that you're talking about. I couldn't comment on uh, whatever communication breakdown uh, you're referring to in this. Oftentimes, or historically, law enforcement tended to focus on the, the, the deaths that involved uh, violent crime. Um, but we need to make sure that we are broadening, broadening our perspectives. Did they ever do a, a formal interview with them? No, no. no. We've no. never talked to a cop. No, no. I have. Well, I did. The, no, yeah. and the day we were there. But did they ever take statements from you guys sitting down? He didn't handwrite nothing. I've never no, talked. This is the first time I've ever talked state. to anyone. Chuck's kids have never thought enough was done. Did the funeral leave you guys with any feelings? For me, it was a big thing to finally, like, put him to rest and like all his problems are gone now. Now that Chuck has been laid to rest, the last remaining piece of his life is crumbling away. Such is the nature of change. This is essentially the last piece of Chuck to exist in the physical world. Once all of this debris is gone, a new home will be built here soon. I would like to see a really nice house built, a uh, single family. This is a beautiful corner. But neighbor Christy isn't sticking around. Yeah. She herself Order is selling her home and moving on. And as the neighborhood continues to change, someday very soon, nobody will remember the man who was lost at home. It's sad, but it's going to become a new home for new family someplace. The only thing that's stable is change. This death investigation will remain open and active indefinitely, police say, because the medical examiner could never determine exactly how Chuck died. His remains were just too far deteriorated. If only they found him earlier. Maybe we'd have answers on how he died. So let's hope when the city encounters a case like this again, and it will happen again, it will have a better plan and better communication. Mm -hmm.
what are the family's hopes, their wishes through all this? They were pretty candid in talking with you. They were very happy about our reporting, saying that this brought forward the plight of people with mental mm -hmm. illness, like yes. Chuck, you know, and what happens with people who are dealing with that hoarding, yeah. you know, and so they were very happy with our reporting, but they're ready to move on too. And so this is essentially our last television report and we're working on a podcast, our final podcast episode for this too. Yeah, well, we hope everybody can think about the person next door that maybe is mm -hmm. estranged from family. So it's, it's always good to be a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. you have yeah, to be linked up with people near you. Thank you, Jeremy. Mm -hmm.